Hi again, everyone. Chris Tisdale here again. Thanks for tuning in. In this presentation, I'm going to continue my basic introduction to linear systems and simultaneous equations. In previous presentations, we talked about the basic two equations, two unknowns case, and we motivated the study and looked at some basic applications. In this presentation, I'm going to go one step further and talk about the case where we have two equations, but three unknowns. So how do you solve it? And geometrically, what does it look like? So let me share my screen with you. Now we know from a procedural point of view, from the previous video, we can solve linear systems by converting the, the system of equations into some sort of equivalent simplified form that reveals the, the true nature of solutions. And by we can interchange equations, we can multiply an equation by a non-zero number, and we can add a multiple of one equation to another equation or, or subtract. So what's the example I'm going to look at today? <clears throat> this is an example of two equations, three unknowns. So the variables or the unknowns are x, y, and z. Now, geometrically, we've got two planes here. We've got two planes. And we want to know how, if at all, these planes are interacting with each other. So, from a geometrical point of view, we're considering the graphs of two planes. And the graphs will either intersect along a line. Now you've still, you've got an infinite number of solutions in that case, but you just know that the two planes intersect as a line. The planes could be parallel planes, but not touch each other. And in that case, the linear system has no solutions. Or the third case is that they're parallel and identical. And again, you've got the infinite number of solutions. Okay, so let's discuss a problem and we can see which, oh, first of all, how to solve it and which, uh, which case this is. Is it case one, two, or three? Okay, all right, so how do we start? Well, I always like to label the equations because then you can refer back to them. So let, let's make some labels. Let's call these equation one and equation two. Together they form a system, a linear system or system of simultaneous equations. Now what I'm going to do is eliminate the easiest variable or the simplest variable first, okay? I'm going to get rid of the x's first purely because there's a 1x there and a 1x there, I can take one equation away from the other equation. So I'm going to take... Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to take equation 2 away from equation 1. You could do it the other way, it doesn't matter, but that way uh, is, is the way I'm going to, to do it. All right, so take this away from this. So the x's will cancel out. You'll get 2y minus negative 3y, which is 5y. 3z minus negative 2z, which is 5z. And you get 14 minus negative 11. That's going to be 25. All right, so we have a new equation now. Let's simplify this by dividing or multiplying both sides by one-fifth. Okay, so now we have a new equation. Let's call that equation three. Okay, so we've essentially done steps two and three here. Okay, we took one away from the other, we'll multiply this by negative one and added, and here we've multiplied by negative uh, by, by one fifth. Okay. Now, one of the tricky things here is people go, well, hang on, how do I determine the solutions if there are infinite number of solutions? 
Well, all we're really asking you for, here for is to come up with some way of expressing the, those infinite number of points via some, um, some G, uh, mathematical description. So how do we do that? All right, well, I'm going to work with three and say um, one now. All right, so in three, what I'm going to do, I'm going to let um, y equal a new parameter called lambda. And then I'm going to get x and y in terms, uh, x and z in terms of lambda. So in three, if I rearrange, I'll get y equals five, uh, z equals five minus y. And that's just five minus lambda. So I've got, so if y is, is this parameter lambda, z then can be expressed in terms of lambda. And we can go back to one to express x in terms of lambda. Now you see why this is important in a minute. So it's x equals 14 minus 2y minus 3z. Because that's a 3 and that's a z. I know they look alike, sorry. So we get 14 minus 2 lambda just by back substitution. And z is 5 minus lambda. All right, so we've got x in terms of lambda here. Now, if I expand this, I'm going to get 14 minus 15, which is negative 1, and I'm get negative 2 lambda plus 3 lambda, which is just lambda. Okay, so now we're in the nice case where we've got everything in terms of this one parameter lambda. So let's write this as a vector. Okay, so x is negative 1 plus lambda, y is lambda, z is 5 minus lambda. Now, I'm going to break this up to give the equation of a line here. So I take the, the constants out and write as a vector. So you've got negative 1, 5, and there's 0 there. And of what remains, I can take out a common factor of lambda, and I've got 1 lambda, 1 lambda, negative 1 lambda. So this then is the equation, the vector equation, parametric form of the line of intersection. Okay, so what is this line? It's a line that passes through the point negative 1, 0, 5 and is parallel to the vector 1, 1, negative 1. Uh, so it passes through, let's say, the point A. Huh? And the line's parallel to the vector 1, 1, negative 1. All right, just squeeze that in there. So this linear system is the first case. They touch each other, the two planes touch each other along a line of, in, of intersection. There's still an infinite number of solutions and this is the vector way of writing the, the uh, line. Okay? Okay, so what does it look like geometrically? That's a lot, lot of algebra, a lot of rearranging, but what does it look like geometrically? Well, let me show you through GeoGebra. All right. Here are the two equations. You can see 
that's the equation for one plane, that's the equation for the other plane. And you can see if I just twist that around, there's a line of intersection running down there. So here we are in the three-dimensional space. The sort of gray plane is the xy plane. Okay, and you can see there that there's a line of intersection between the two planes. Right, and this point here is a point on the line, and this point here is a vector that is parallel to the line of intersection. Okay. Okay, well, what do you think? Two equations, three unknowns. It's just a little bit of rearranging. You know that either they're going to intersect with the solution forming a line, they're going to be parallel with no intersection and no solution, or they're going to be identical planes where they lie on top of each other. I'll do those couple of examples later. In the example I looked at today was just a line of intersection. If you have any questions, any comments, I'd love to hear them. You can put them in the comment section. Please join me for more examples when we continue our journey through linear systems. See you later, everyone. Bye.